Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do my April wrap-up. So my mind was a little bit all over the place in April, which you will probably see in this wrap-up. I think my reading experience was slightly affected by that. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that feeling of um, sort of struggling a slightly with uh, concentration and things like that during the current times. Uh, but let's just get into the books. So the first one I want to talk about is the book that I read for Aussie April that is Hannah Kent's The Good People. So this is a historical fiction set in Ireland in the 19th century following three particular women. Uh, one is a grandmother and she is responsible for taking care of her grandchild after her daughter passes away. And then uh, a young girl starts working for her as a maid to help her take care of the kid. Uh, there's also another woman in the town uh, where they live, a very small sort of isolated community um, that is sort of a alternative medicine woman. She helps people with various problems using herbs and things like that. Um, but they treat her as a witch uh, and the the lives of these three women are sort of interconnected through the grandchild. So the grandmother thinks that the child is a changeling. Basically what that means is she thinks fairies have taken the child um, and replaced him with an imposter, a look-alike. She wants help in getting uh, back the real kid. Uh, so she sort of seeks out the, the witch and um, the, the novel follows these three women and their struggles in this town and a lot of them being kind of outcasts. The characters themselves I didn't really connect with and I think that was the main thing that didn't make this a fantastic reading experience. However, the way that the the town itself was explored in the book I really enjoyed. I feel like Hannah Kent really uh, got across the sort of uh, superstitions in the town and the group behavior in it. The fact that they had a lot of uh, superstitions and um, beliefs around fairies as a way to sort of cope and to make sense of things. Um, and the way, sort of in general, the way the, the community acts as a whole and sort of uh, as a collective, uh, I found sort of reminiscent of Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which is uh, a book that I love. Uh, so I found found that part of The Good People really interesting and engaging and the more I thought about the book the more I liked those aspects of it. Um, but it didn't really connect with the main three characters so I ended up giving this three stars and I think I'm still really interested in Hannah Kent's other book, A Burial Rites, which I think is more focused on just one woman. Uh, so we'll see how that goes but I, I enjoyed this one. It wasn't my favorite uh, but I def definitely saw potential in it. I sort of had f similar feelings about another historical fiction book I read in April which is The Animals at Lockwood Manor by Jane Healy. This one is set in the Second World War. It follows a natural history museum curator who is responsible for moving some specimens to um, a rich rich man's mansion during the war to keep them safe. The book sort of follows her um, developing relationship with the house owner's daughter. Uh, so she is sort of a sheltered uh, girl uh, who has some complicated family history. This book has everything going for it. It has a lesbian romance at the center of it. The relationship really reminded me of The Paying Guests by Sarah Waters, which again is something that I really liked about it. And there's a gothic tone throughout the book, which again is something that I usually enjoy. I just felt like I didn't connect with this one again, kind of like with The Good People. I didn't connect with the characters. I couldn't quite believe in them, if that makes sense. I did really enjoy the reading experience while I was reading it. I just felt was felt a little bit um, underwhelmed after it and I think uh, it might just be that I wasn't completely focused while I was reading it uh, but also just didn't really stand out to me. The next one I want to talk about is one of the books that I read from my TBR uh, that is My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante and this is a book that I buddy read with uh, Mary from Books and Pizza. I read this both for <laughs> the TBR clear out and for um, the Reading the Med, um, which is a hashtag on Instagram that is run by Jasmine Alexa, um, where you are basically encouraged to read uh, books related to the Mediterranean, 
so in April the theme was to read something Italian and so I read, finally read the first book in the Neapolitan Quartet. So I really enjoyed the reading experience of this and especially being able to share it with Mary. Um, she is Italian so I think uh, that really helped in give, giving me a different perspective on the book as well. But this one basically follows two young girls who, is, who are Lila and Lenu. They have a lot of other names as well, um, but I'm just going to use those for uh, clarity. So mm -hmm. they are kids when the book starts and it runs, uh, it covers their lives up to when they are 16, I think, uh, the first book. So basically it is a coming of age story about these two girls and their relationships and uh, their various crushes and romances and uh, school and education and purpose in life and family drama, all kinds of things. And everything is set in uh, Naples with sort of a very violent backdrop. So they are totally used to being surrounded by violence of all kinds. I found both Lila and Lenu quite unlikable. In general, what I loved about this book is the interaction between the two girls. So I found the, the sort of almost obsessive and tense relationship between them really fascinating. The way that their friendship is at times almost b bounding on attraction and uh, affection, but also there's a lot of like competitiveness in between them. And a lot of the time it isn't a, quite a balanced competitiveness either uh, because Le Lenu is, um, or at least she is portraying herself as always being behind. I did find that the two uh, main characters, the, the women, uh, are quite clearly portrayed, even though uh, Lenu isn't as visible as Lila is. Uh, you do kind of get to know her through being constantly uh, in her head. Um, but the, a lot of the other characters I felt like I couldn't quite distinguish them and at first I was thinking that it was just because there, there's a big cast but I think in general they aren't given enough um, time to become fully their own. So I'm expecting that I will find that that changes as I continue with the series. Uh, I did really enjoy this first one though so uh, I'm glad to, f to have read it and I, I have actually already started the second book in the quartet. The next book is a book that I read both for the TBR Clear Out and also for the Owls Magical Readathon. It is Wind Set and Stars by Antoine de Saint Exupéry. This is a memoir of the author who wrote The Little Prince, which is one of my favorite books. Um, so this book is a memoir of an aviator in the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, and he talks about various things to do with his experience as an aviator. Uh, one of the most prevalent things I think in this book is his love of flying. Uh, he talks about flying, uh, flying a plane before technology really became a central thing in the plane. He talks about the experience of being in such immediate um, contact with the elements and with weather. He muses on life and shares some of his philosophy I think on life as well and about life purpose and about connection with other humans, um, about connecting with the, with the world in general, um, about traveling, about um, work uh, and our uh, sort of interaction with work about death. So many things encompassed in this book. I found him such a beautiful writer as well uh, which meant that I actually ended up on underlining so many pages in the book that I always had to had have a pencil close to hand while I was reading it and I was actually reading it quite slowly because of the fact that I found each page beautiful. Um, so I, as I said I have written a full review of it and I go into more detail about what I loved about it uh, in that so I will link that below if you're interested. I would highly recommend this. If you like him already from The Little Prince definitely read it but even if you haven't come across that one uh, I think that this is a beautiful piece of writing and uh, a, t a sort of a, a um, a title of its time and it, like it shows the 1920s and 30s perspective and context but it also feels timeless a lot of uh, in a lot of ways. In April I also read one graphic novel and that is Night Lights by Lorena Alvarez Gomez. This is um, 
how should I describe this? It's basically about a young girl who is uh, dreaming about various monsters and magical things and when she's awake she starts drawing them and basically making uh, art of her dreams and then the dreams sort of come to life. So it's about creativity and imagination, about the power of uh, imagination as well and possibly some of the dangers in it. Um, I think the illustrations are beautiful, like the style of them are fantastic and the colors as well especially. Uh, was just completely my style, it's sort of a boom studio reminiscent for me. Uh, which is definitely my kind of thing. Um, but also I found that the illustrations really used the paper uh, to make interesting perspectives and uh, just sort of use the space in really interesting and um, creative ways. So it wasn't just a straightforward uh, comic or anything like that. It, it feels like it is an experience to read and to uh, to uh, look at the page. I also read a poetry collection in April which is very unusual for me and that is Hey Bert by Roberto Pastore who uh, is from the Story Time channel um, that you should all go check out. I will link it below. Um, I love both him and Sean and this poetry collection is uh, various sort of it covers a lot of themes some of the things that stood out to me was the experience of growing up and uh, sort of nostalgia in general looking back on things that you've lost or um, things that are uh, don't exist anymore sort of finding joy in small things like uh, in the everyday things that might not be anything special to anyone else but that means something to you there's some poems about uh, body and physicality as well as love and relationships and there's so many things going on in this uh, collection I, I found a lot of them really beautiful. I think uh, Roberto Pastore is a fantastic poet and uh, I really enjoyed reading this one. I will share one of the poems in the collection that I really particularly enjoy and this is called There is a World Below. When you're clinging to the edge of the world don't be afraid to fall. There is a world below. There is a world below a living thing where debris like us can settle. You have made no allegiances to this false construction. There are no buff lawmen patrolling your inner jurisdiction. It is a monolith you have been clinging to that you knew was coming down. Let go. There is a world below. There are many graves you have already tended to. Their message sits like a beard upon your, uh, upon your heart. Your stomach resembles a tangle of Christmas lights that each year gets harder to unravel. There is a world below, a living thing, where you can brush the leaves from out of the books you've been nesting in, where you can reach into the TV screen and pull out another disillusioned hand, same as yours. Where you're clinging to the edge of the world, don't be afraid to fall, there is a world below. The next one I want to talk about is The Poison Chocolates Case by Anthony Berkeley. This is a golden age crime. Can you tell my reading has been all over the place this month? Um, so I was recommended this uh, by someone who commented, Wild for Classics. So this was one of the ones uh, I got as a recommendation and really enjoyed it. Basically this book follows a case of poisoning through chocolate. So there's poison in the chocolate. Someone dies and a group of crime enthusiasts for, for uh, various reasons and backgrounds um, decide to take on the case and try to figure figure out what happened and who is guilty. So it's kind of like a Poirot mystery but instead of having one Poirot you have like 12 and they all get the same information from the police and sort of the basics of the case and what is known and um, have the ability to do their own uh, searching for clues and uh, talking to people and interviewing and things like that. And then they each get the opportunity to share their theory and hypothesis and whatnot. The thing that makes this particularly fun is the way that Berkeley plays with the um, the stereotypes or the common traits in the genre. Especially I think it questions the stability and objectivity of evidence uh, as seen in crime mysteries. So um, they each have the ability to find the same things but they interpret it very differently. It's not black and white to find the truth basically is, is the premise of the book and um, 
ends up being a really entertaining book, especially if you are someone who enjoys mysteries. I think just seeing that whole play with the genre was really fun for me. I had a lot of fun with this and I am, will definitely be looking for more Golden Age crime um, books to add to my to read list. So if you have any recommendations, feel free to share them below. Um, yeah, it's definitely something that I enjoy but don't take enough time to read. And finally, lastly, I have a book that I again hope to not go into too much detail here because I'm planning to do a full video for this. It is Brown Album by Purushista Purushista Khakpur. This is an Iranian-American uh, writer who has written several fiction books, but this is a, a collection of essays that is coming out on the 19th of May by Vintage. I got a net galley of this. This collection of essays covers various subjects such as politics, racism, the experiences of an immigrant, uh, of that sort of duality in identity, and especially when those identities are sort of at war with each other, but also more personal things like her health and mental health, uh, especially. There are so many things that she talks about, but the um, common thread is the Iranian-American perspective. And I found this really... How do, how do I describe my experience? A lot of the time I related to it in a way that I haven't ever done because I haven't read a lot of Iranian women's experience um, in uh, literature. So uh, my dad is from Iran, so I am half uh, Iranian. And uh, I, for some reason, I've sort of been avoiding reading uh, about Iran because usually it's su such a, a loaded topic. It should go, actually goes into that in the first essays about the uh, complicated relationship between the US and Iran and especially after 9-11. I found myself relating to it on a really personal level while at other times not relating to it at all because a lot of her experience is completely different from mine. I found generally her to be a really thoughtful writer, to raise a lot of important questions and to really critically value the way that this relationship has been handled by media and uh, things like that and I feel like um, this is a book that I would recommend to a lot of people. I did definitely really enjoyed it so I do want to talk more about it but I have already written a full review so I go into more details about it there. In case you're interested it will be linked below. So those are all of the books that I wanted to talk about today. I feel like I've been talking for ages. Uh, as I said my mind has been all over the place and my genres have also been all over the place and uh, not very many physical books, only two from my TBR. So May is of course the Springathon, so that is all uh, that is where my mind is at at the moment. Um, so I hope that your uh, reading in April was good. Uh, let me know if you have read any of these books, your thoughts about them, uh, or if you read something really good in April that you would like to share with me, feel free to do so in the comments. I always love to hear how your reading is going. I hope you're having a good day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.